그대로 꺼져 뭔가 보면 의미 없는 생각도 감정 그들의 모아 모아 그대로 유지통이 버려 발걸음을 돌려 또한 내 여기 서울려 나 빼고 모두가 잘 어울려 벌써 소전 없을 집엔 안 들려 다 괜찮아 보여 행복해 보여 나만 어지러운 건가 봐 아프게 지나가 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 해내고 지나가 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 내 마음에 꽃은 언제 필까 바쁘게 살지만 그냥 좀 쉬다가 신호등 안온 불이 언제쯤 바뀌니 이만 입고 에너지를 쏟아 붓고 살지 할 때쯤 초록 빨간 뒤중에 뭐가 더넌 기대돼 yeah. 
going on? What's going on? Hot damn! We're back. Shout out to the CIA, the competent, intelligent, and assertive men out there. One love to the F, B, I, feminine, beautiful, inspirational ladies in the house. How we doing? That's right. He's back. Big Shirley, get your ass up here, girl. Come on. Have you missed me? YouTube in a little blase blase. I wish he would get offline. Why don't he go somewhere? I hate he's on the... Why he always on? Leave for a week and like, where he gonna come back? Where my favorite baby daddy? I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I hate him. Who he think he is wearing these suits at 10 o'clock at night looking all sexy and shit like a grown damn man? That's some boo. Nothing can stop me. No. Don't get mad. I'm to you get better. Realize. Show some love in that super chat. Come on, man. Get it. Get it. Get the likes up. Let's do this thing. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You want to join the channel? You take advantage of the chat room. You must be a member. To be a member, you got to go ahead and join from your desktop. Click the membership button. Moderator, pin the join link in the chat room. Somebody pin the join link in the chat room. Bobbledy, bobbledy, bob. We are back. 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 How are we doing, everybody? They're like, oh, is he is he coming back? When, when, I thought he said he was coming back tonight. What? What? what uh, what? I, I, I don't, I don't understand. I thought he was supposed to be. Mm, I'm sorry. How you doing? How you doing? Bobble dee, bobble dee, bop. Okay. So we are back. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope you guys have had a good holiday season. Um, things like that. I know I took a very, very much needed vacation, uh, and uh, thank God for that. I am a hardworking man, and I am not accustomed to taking vacations. But let me tell you something: I needed that, and uh, I have not really been around doing much anything other than doing what the doctor ordered. Shout out to my doctor. Doing what the doctor ordered, taking a little break, chillaxing, not getting involved in too much anything. Keep 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 your uh, you know, you keep your ear to the street, of course, but you don't get too much involved. So we got to go ahead and knock some of these cobwebs and little dust off. So uh, let me go ahead and make sure we got the correct setup. Let's go to Maine. Zoom in on Maine. I am sorry, guys. Candle of the evening. Um, oh, I forgot. Hold on. Just a second. It's been a minute. Uh, 
That's right. You see, guys, I've been gone for a hot second. And what? I'm all out of sorts. Candle of the evening. That is the candle from Hotel One, where and uh, it's a it's a great fragrance. And the fragrance of the evening is from Bodessa of the Victorious. This is called Blue Sapphire. One of the sexiest, most dominant rose oud fragrances on the planet. All right, so. You guys good? We doing good? Let me see what's going on in the chat room. Give me a second to get this all back in line and geared up. Uh, and we will get started. If you guys don't have me on, if you're not following on Instagram, if you missed a pretty funny impromptu live stream on Instagram today, follow me on Instagram to catch all the going zone and the happenings behind the scene. Because if you want to catch me, Impromptu, Instagram is going to be one of the best places to do it. Uh, let's bring that up a little bit. Instagram is going to be one of the best places to do it because I can just go on and go off. Do, 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 do. So, uh, hope you guys have had a, hope this last couple of weeks has uh, helped you get some perspective on things, you know. I, I'm not un, I'm not unaware of what's been going on on a macro and on a micro level. And in, in my own fashion, I will discuss things as I see fit. Uh, but for me, I like to stay on task on what I'm trying to accomplish over here. And the same and it's always been the same thing. Helping men get the best, helping men get what they want, the best outcomes in the world, you know, and men like it. Like, believe it or not, ladies, men want women. Many men today, regardless as to the politics of it and everything else, still want relationships. Still want relationships. Still want women. Not, and I'm, I know there's a lot of talk online about this and that, pump it up. Most guys want a relationship of emotional significance and kind of profound. So here's the thing. Keep the likes up, keep the engaging up, let's get into it because I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Ladies, 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 there's one question that most modern women can't answer. And last night while I was out doing what I always do, you know, having a nice dinner in my neighborhood, just chilling, I had um, two very young, two very uh, lovely young women because uh, people always, if they see me, if people see me out and about, People will tell you that I will say, hey, how you doing? I'm not going to high side. I, I will take a picture with you. I am a cool person. Uh, disrespect my space. Respect my time. Nope, no handshakes. We do a fist bump. But last night, um, I had what happens all the time with me. People come up and want to talk. People want to come up and talk. And uh, and I'm not going to say your name, and, and so don't dox yourself if you don't want to be doxed. The young lady in her mid twenties came up and asked the question, "Hey, I'm about to be in the danger zone, and uh, what do I do if I want to end up basically getting a husband, finding a husband?" And we went to the conversation, and uh, and it went down the path like many conversations do today with women. Like I said on Instagram today, it's all about you, boo. With so many modern women today, it's all about what you want. You, 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 you. You're the center of your own life. You're the center of attention. You're the center of focus. So much so that many women today simply don't even know or understand the very men they say they want. And what it really is, is, and I'm not begrudging you, what many women want is a lifestyle. Many women want the, the choice to be able to work from home or not have to work at all. They want to be able to raise their children in their, and not to put them in uh, daycare and things like that. And I'm good with that. But let me tell you something. In order to make that happen, you got to have a man that can uh, afford those kind of bills. And I'm just going to get right down to it. That's where all this high value man stuff comes from. 
And for those of you who don't remember, I'm going to refresh your memory. This whole high value man thing is not a Kevin Samuels creation, but we're going to go over it again because people still keep screwing it up. It is a man who's making about $10,000 a month or more annually. And that's in a cost of living like Dallas, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, where a dollar gets you a dollar. So that's $120,000 a year. He's earned that money for three to five years. Three years of starting, five years is kind of locked in there. High value men recognize him as a peer or a potential peer. He has a network of high value men and other people. He, he is living, at, living and working and doing things at a LinkedIn level, meaning visible. At, at a glance, you can understand who and what he does. It's not just an entrepreneur. Uh, although, you know, shout out to the entrepreneurs. And utility, he's useful to others and the group. That's the basics. That is the basics of a high value man as I have, as most people would define it. Now, of course, there are going to be other things along with that. And I talk about dropping a dime on a high value man. And I'm in, in order to main, get a high value status is one thing, but in order to keep it, you must have discipline, integrity, morals, and ethics. That's why I do not automatically drop athletes, entertainers, or musicians into this because they will, they'll get jumped in there with their income. But may be lacking in other areas. In order to be a high value man, in my opinion, you need to be at least 30 years old. First off, it takes you at least three to five years to earn the income. Not many professions pay you $10,000 a month out of the gate at 25. And there's a certain level of maturity and wisdom that comes after a man hits age of 30. This is what so many women need to understand that the very men you want take a long time to develop. Gentlemen, you do not have to, you, you should start getting this thing figured out. You, 40 years old is when you should start keeping your score. Your 20s should be for risk. Your 30s should be for, in, for your risk. Your 30s should be for your grind. And by 40, you start looking up. Why is this so important? Because men must become value. Ladies, you must maintain value. And that's what I was trying to tell you, what I try to tell women who were born a little bit more attractive than the average. The eights, nines, and tens, or the dreaded adjustable sevens, now adjustable sixes. You must maintain value. Here's the problem with so many modern women today. You're taking your youth, your, when you're at your highest value, and you're, and you're blowing it on superficial, shallow stuff because you're superficial and shallow at this point. You're wanting to be a hot girl, party, this and that. And so that's most. I'm not saying don't have a life, but you got to grow up. Because at this point in your life, you're starting to meet many men who are in your... Um, I'm going to look over here, and if these likes aren't over 7,000, we go to break. And I'm not going to do half a break. When I go to break, I'm going to do the full break. Over 7,000 likes, folks. I know you got excited. You saw me come back, but hit the like button. Many women today, you're not forced to grow up and mature like your grandmothers and great-grandmothers. I could make the same conversation for men too, but we're not talking about the men today. So what ends up happening? When a woman is in between the ages of 18 to 24, she's living her best life, having all the fun. Then she hits 25 and shit starts to get real. 26. And you're still out moving and dating like you're in your, in your, your college years. You're, uh, like, and, and you're not. You still call yourself a young woman, but you're not. Not for that marriage and dating. Stop calling yourself young woman at 26. Not for marriage and dating. You are about to become old. Then you hit age 27 to 35. Danger zone. What I call the danger zone. The danger zone is named that way because that life between 27 and 35 is where you better square up and understand what it is you want. Because life starts making choices for you, ladies, after 35. Things start getting taken away. And here's the ultimate thing. And I want you guys, I want you ladies to understand. I'm going to even mute the music in just a second because I need you to understand something very important. Men who must go out and separate themselves from the pack. 
men who are late bloomers, who didn't bloom in high school, didn't get the full beard, didn't grow. A lot of men, I didn't stop physically growing until I was 25 years old. I grew three inches in college. Why is this important? Because your male counterparts who you are not growing up around, learning these guys are having to go make themselves valuable. They see what they were and what they've become. And you ladies have had your value and it's just up to you to maintain it. But how are you spending it? Because there is one question that modern women who want to be with a man, who want to be with a man, a high value man in particular, if you want to be, if you want to be married to a high value man in particular, there is one question you as a modern woman must be able to answer. I'm going to cut the music for this shit. There is one question as a, as a woman that you must be able to answer if you want to marry a high-value man. You want to know what that question is? Let me get the close-up for this. What can you give to that man that he wants that you have not given to somebody else? Again, what can you give to that man that he wants that you have not given to another man? Think about it. Why is that so important? Because as a man, as a man, let's say a man like myself or a man like the guys I know, when we bring a woman into our lives, we are going to take you on as it is. Your, your debt, everything else becomes mine. All that, hey, you, you're a package deal. Everything you come through the door with is now my responsibility. And it's going to be paid for out of the things I've earned and put in, and developed and everything else. And I've had to get that because no one gave it to me. No one gave it to any of these guys. They have to go earn the stuff. The bills you rack up, all the things, you're going to present them to this Boaz in your mind. And you think he's not going to ask you a question. All right, great. You're $100,000 in student loan debt, $30,000 in consumer debt. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, uh-huh, great. All right. Well, let me ask you one question and one question only. What do you have to give to me that you have not given to another man? Uh-oh, 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 SpaghettiO. See, that's why I had this woman's picture up here. Because there used to be a time where a woman could say, oh, I can tell you what I'm giving you. I'm giving you my, my womb. I'm, I'm Actually, I'm giving you my virginity. I have never slept with another man. You will be the first man I ever have sex with. So that's the value I have to offer and it has not been given to anyone else. If you don't have that to offer, understand something, ladies. Everything you have to offer, the best man you will ever have in your life has been had by lesser men. Lesser men. Lesser men. Lesser meaning they didn't marry you. You cannot go to the best man you ever had and give him less than you're going to give to your college boyfriend. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. See, that's what happens. You take your youth, you take your, 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 your womb, your, your firm, fresh years, and you give them out to, to these guys who aren't marrying kind of guys. This young lady was like, well, I, I want to date. I, I, young lady, I'm going to just tell a story. So you're dating an athlete who's 26 years old and you're 26 years old. And I say, well, does he want to get married? Well, I think I can make him. You are a side chick. What have I said? You are willing, women like you, women like most modern women would rather be five, fifth in the rotation to a dude with some money versus looking at a dude who's a doctor who wants to date you. 
yet you don't want to get with him because he'll be settling because he's boring. You out of your French toast ass mind. And believe me, I speak in person just the way I speak right here. They'll tell you. And the reality is so many modern women realize that they don't have anything to offer to the man who's going to pay the freight for a lifetime that they have not already given to another man. See, there used to be a time where women would say, okay, well, it can't be virginity. Okay, well, in my in, in the 80s, women used to say, well, I never did, you know, uh, what that mouth do. I, did, I won't do that until I do that for a husband. I've even heard them talk about, I won't do nothing, uh, you know, what word do I want to use? In the bum bum. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I'll have sex, but I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to, different kinds of sex. Understand something, ladies, that's a cheap prize. Better than nothing, but men can't verify that. We just got to trust that. Many of you ladies are coming up to a man and saying, you know what? I've saved my backdoor action for my husband. No way to verify that. But even if we say, okay, good, fine. Is that really worth a man putting you in a house and paying your bills for the rest of his life? I want you ladies to ask yourself a question. What are you giving to the man that you have not given to another man? Because here's, a, here's what we understand. Here's what men understand. The older you get, we're getting what's left. Men are getting what's left because someone else got you when you were younger. More optimistic, less damaged, less bruised, less traumatized. And I think it's funny that a lot of women have the nerve to talk about you're settling for somebody when you're the one with all the miles. Seriously, ladies, what are you... You have to be able to answer this question in a non-judgmental way. You need to ask yourself, what have I saved? What special am I going to give? Because believe it or not, men want to be appreciated. We want to know the things we've gone out and done and accomplished are going to be doing for you. You hold them special. That is why it is increasingly more difficult to find a woman over a certain age that can be married because nothing is special. She's got her own house, her own car. She's got this, she's got that. She's been here, she's been there. She did not, ain't no, ain't, there's no magic. There's nothing new. So let's go down the list. You're not a virgin, so you can't say I'm giving you that. If you don't have a child, that is something. That's why I have this woman on the on this thing right here because if you have a child, everything you have to offer your so-called your to be husband is leftovers. And I use the word because I want you ladies to understand that you are overvaluing yourselves. That is why the young lady I spoke to last night, I told her, you're not a wife because it's all about you, about me, what I want and this and that, and this is boring, this and that. And I'm like, you're an adjustable six. Actually, you're a six. You're a six, but you have the mindset of a woman who's a nine and you're wanting everything to be about you. Ladies, I'm not saying this to insult you. I am saying this to, to get you to reality. That when you're coming to the market, Danger zone. 27 to 35, and you've already had your heart broken, you have damage that you, and most likely you have not addressed it in a way to really heal it. That's why I'm so big on therapy. We're not meant to date 30 million people. We're not meant to date. 
the human psyche, the female psyche, you're not meant to date men. You're not meant to get out of here and figure that. That's not how we are, have evolved. We have evolved into, to live in groups of roughly around 150, 200. A large human settlement used to be around 5,000 people. I'm in Atlanta and they're 5 million plus. Dating is dumb. It doesn't work, especially when you are choosing. Because you pick what you like and what you feel. And I'm sorry, ladies, you are emotional creatures. That is the way the creator made you, love you. But your happiness is a temporary thing. Gentlemen, raise your hand in the chat room if you have ever tried to make a woman happy. It is impossible. You can do everything Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and she will be happy in the moment. But Monday will come again and then she will be equally as unhappy as she was before. That's why happiness is a fool's errand. Ladies, you must start picking men on character, ability to protect, provide. And then those are the men you need to be, be willing to cooperate with, submit, and give all that you have left. Because everything that you have, you've already given to somebody else. If you are not willing to give all that you have left and get on his program, buy a dog, die alone. <laughs> and that is where so many of you ladies are headed. Because you are so traumatized, so hurt, so confused, so bogged down, so this, so that. And what it means is you have not really focused on what you really, really want to make you happy. What makes people happy is something to look forward to in relationships. Ladies, what makes you happy is not a job. It's not money. That is why I run into so many women, successful, attractive women who listen to the show and say, I wish I could tell these young girls to stop doing this, stop doing that. I wish somebody would have told me because all I have to look forward in the next 30 years because I am in such a psychological position that I cannot even give to the man who, oh boy, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I don't want to say young lady, but you know what I'm talking about. Let me see what's going on. Buy a dog. Speaking of buying dogs. I'm a, somebody asked me to revisit this subject. I'm going to revisit the subject on accepting uh, gifts as uh, pets. That show I did on single women and dogs. I, that, I, I, people want a part two to that. So we're probably going to do that this week. Why is this important? Because you ladies need to understand that it is not as though men don't want relationships. It is you who are running from relationships. I cannot tell you how many young women I sit down in front of. I'm not wanting to be mad. I want this. I don't want that. You're out here living hot girls. Some are living your best life, not thinking about it and thinking that your non-black counterparts who are getting married in their earlier 20s, you're thinking they're foolish. And this woman said it. When I was working, I'm working in, in an office full of women and they're all powerful, successful black women, all of them single. Then I went to work in corporate America and I'm working in an office with a bunch of non-black women and all of them are married. My guess is many of you know that you have given your best away and you're still trying to, and you're still trying to get brand new prices on a used vehicle. On the market, that will be called a bad deal. You're trying to take an item that's been worn and return it. And it smells like another man. He's boring. His sex isn't good. How would you know that? Because you're comparing to other men. Well, Kevin, that's not fair. They've been with other women too and da 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 Because see, that's what women often do when it starts getting hot. They want to say, well, we both got to fix this because he's done it too. But see, here's the difference. As a man, I can tell you, no matter what I've done with a woman out here who's a girlfriend, I have never paid 
her credit card bills. She ain't on my insurance. She's not on the mortgage. I'm not buying a car. See, a man's provisions. See, you want to know what a cheating is like to a man? What's che cheating it to a man? Here's what, how, what cheating really is, ladies. It's not a man having sex. You know, that's what we want to say, but it's really not. When a man is taking the resources and giving them to another woman, that's when he's cheating on you. So if a man has to get out here and date, oh, we're going there tonight. Ladies, what do you have to offer a man that you haven't already given to another man? And understand, it's not what do you have to offer he also must want it. It's like going to a restaurant and you want crab and they've got chicken. It may be the best chicken in the, in, in the city. It may be award-winning chicken dish, but if he wants crab, chicken simply is not what he wants. And why is this important? Because if you women start thinking about relationships from what men want if that becomes a benchmark what men want first because i got news for you it ain't all about you it's all about us it's all about us shout out to the late great patrice o'neill when a man is in his best position he elevates a woman to her best position when you're without a man you're out here miserable working stressed everything else trying to fend for the world and too afraid to to put the burden down because you at least you know how to do this i honestly feel sorry for a lot and i saw, and they will tell you i said this last night i feel sorry for a lot of our women because they are so afraid to put it down they are so afraid to stop uh to, because that's all they've been told it's like i, I I got to work. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to, I got to, no, no. But what it really comes down to, like I told that sister last night, I was like, really, you're afraid to be vulnerable. Why would you choose to be one of three or four different side chicks to a man who lives in a different state? When you got a man who's right in front of you, who wants to date you, who's a doctor, and you say he's boring. Then if that very man shows up with Becky, when you decide to settle for him, you're going to be the first one in five years to talk about where are all the good men at. Fear, ladies. Fear is what drives a lot of this. False evidence appearing real. You judge men harshly and you're afraid of how men will judge you if they knew the truth. And the truth of the matter is, you made bad decisions in your past. You've given men who weren't worth it the best. And you must be willing to do that again. If you are not willing to give a man who's worth it what you gave a man who's not worth it, stay by your freaking self. Because it is insulting to, to watch women give men who are worth it less than they've given dudes who are not worth it. And you know how you're dealing with somebody like this? They're emotionally unavailable, aloof, non-committal. Everything's very surface. And this is why therapy is so important. And I sat there and talked to these people last night for a couple of hours not, and I wasn't getting paid for it because I want to see those young sisters have a better outcome. And the young brothers that came around, I want to see them have a better outcome. But we're not going to get there unless we tell the truth. And I said this in front of her. I said this in front of her and one of the guys that she called boring came downstairs. He's like, oh, why'd you salt my game? I'm like, do you think he... You think that this dude don't know you seeing somebody else? When you ghost a dude that's a doctor, I mean, it was some boy howdy. If I had a camera on me last night, that show would have done a million views, and this happens all the time. Everything that I talk about on this show was represented in that interaction. 
this young lady, the Christian feminist, the good guy who's a doctor, the married man, the other guy. It all happened right there. Raised by your mom and daddy. You want what your dad had, but your mama was willing to get with your dad in process. You want it now. You can't give a man something you've already given to another man and expect him to value it as new. You got a lot of women in out here in the, in the modern dating arena who are hurt. Modern dating trauma. I've talked about it before and it was on full display. And unless you ladies start talking to somebody on a professional level to work through your issues that you have given to somebody else, your virginity, your heart, the best parts of you, the hope, another man in the world is out here walking around with your virginity and your hope. And what do you have to offer the man who's going to be paying your bills and have your back? I said it and I meant it. Is there any hope in you? Is there any future in you? I know there's potential. I know there's possibility. But if, if you're not willing to give it, if you're not willing to risk because of fear and the fear is there, why? Because the failure of the first, the ones that hurt you or the ones you do hurt. I'm not going to say who hurt you. I'm going to say the hurt that came from what you chose. You know what a normal, healthy relationship looks like, ladies? Boredom. Stability is boring. It's not back blowing out sex. It's routine. And if you ladies don't start understanding that what you have to offer men today is something you've already given other men and adjust your asking price accordingly and humble yourselves to when you reach in front of a man who was willing to put time to try to be something with you and you don't start realizing that this is your opportunity. Like I told that young lady, that's the kind of man you should be trying to get on his page with. That's the kind of man you need to be trying to put your all into. That's who you need to be trying to agree and cooperate with. Not your friends in the office over here. Not your job. Not this. This right here. Because if that man didn't like you, he wouldn't be sitting here right now. Let's open it up. Maybe I'll know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'll know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'm just off. But I think I know what I'm talking about. Ladies. Can you answer that question? What do you have to offer men that you have not already offered, that you have not already given to another man? What do you have to offer a man that he wants that you haven't already given to another man? Anything? Because if you have something to offer, maybe I skipped over something. Maybe I did. I want to know, ladies, what do you have to offer a man that you have not already given to another man? Gentlemen, I think it's a good question. I think it's a good question. I think the guys want to know. Let's open the call lines. Questions. Comments. Concerns. You think I'm off on something. I know a lot of the women, especially the women who have children, are going to feel some kind of way about the... Uh, when I put that thing up there with the kids, but I'm sorry, ma'am. If you already have kids by another man, that's one less thing you have to offer to a man that's a new experience. Everything a man gives to you is not new. And I'm going to tell you something. If as a man, I know what it feels like to give somebody something that should be special that somebody else has already given because this is the response you get. It's like, oh, that's nice. Thank you. Like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, you've, oh, I'm sorry. That's not special. You've, you've had that 17 times before. Oh, it's nice. 
but you can't fake human expression. And some of you ladies are so bad at reading men, you don't even know that this is the time you should have acted like it was something. <laughs> oh my God, I am teaching tonight. I am teaching tonight because this is not something that you are going to bypass. And men are, are men today are understanding their value. And I told that woman last night, your biggest, your biggest issue is when a man like that wakes up and realizes that he's accepting substandard treatment because so many of us as men were raised to not value ourselves because we got a mixed message being grown up in the matriarchy. But when we finally start to value yourself, you understand women, you accept them. You just won't accept the BS and you won't accept anything less than what you're worth. And it doesn't mean you have to be hateful or venomous to a woman. There's just the stuff that you want to give aren't working anymore. So when you decide that you want to settle for him, that guy ain't going to have time for you. So when you decide you want to slide back around and do this whole, hey, big head. ain't going to be no, hey, big head. No, no, no. Because ladies, believe it or not. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. And I want to get into this conversation. Let's get into it right now. The call lines are about to open. Let's take a slight break. And let's get into it, damn it. <clears throat> Luna. Money work. El mundo quiere dinero. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do it a different way. Not what I wanted to do. Uh, I'm a little off, guys. Let's get back into it. Money work. What do you have to offer, ladies? What you gonna give them that you haven't given anybody else? Uh oh, you live with somebody? That's not new. What do you have to offer? I'm a PhD. I'm a PhD. Money 
Lunes, lunático. So fair question, ladies. Very fair question. What do you have to offer a man who wants to marry you or a man who's looking for a wife that you have not already given to another man? What do you have? Or I got a question. Do you ladies think that's a fair? Do you think that's fair? Do you think it's fair? If you're not going to get on, you got to get on camera. So if you're going to try to do your little, go ahead and start your video. If I can't see you on camera, okay. Go ahead. Unmute yourself. <clears throat> Hello, how are you? Sure, that's fine. How old are you? 23 years old. All right. So what do you have on the subject? Mm-hmm. Okay. No. No. My are uh, you you're a virgin on what on what grounds? On what reason? That's okay. That's fine. That's fine. Were you raised with your mother and father in the household? Your mother and father are married? Are you a Christian? Uh, is your father actively help, helping you uh, sort or vet these men? Nope. Then that's why you can't find anybody. I'm going to say this to all you women. You always ask, why can't I find a man under these conditions when you're not working with the men? You think you're not going to be able to go out here on a dating market where sex happens before dates. So my question is, why are you not working with your father and the men of the church? I know, but I'm asking why. Your parents are strict. They don't want you to be married. So your parents want you to be married. They don't want you to be out here dating. Then why aren't you working with your parents on finding a husband? Why aren't you working with your father on finding a husband? Be honest. Mm-hmm. Rebellious daughter. So no, you can't. So yes, your situation is impossible. Yep. Because you're in rebellion. Yep. And it should be. Well, there's no advice, ma'am. It's like, look, if your your mother and your father has raised you to protect your, your chastity, but that has that has to do with some sort of foundational reasons, religious or otherwise, then he also needs to be helping you get in front of the kind of man that he would want you to be married to. You can't be in charge of this. The reality is most women don't like the, the men that their fathers pick because he's going to pick something that you don't like. He's going to give you liver and onions and Brussels sprouts and you want a cheeseburger and fries. Guess what a cheeseburger and fries makes you? Fat. Right. You heard it, folks. They want a meal to taste good. This is why I mean women like yourself want men who are loyal, alpha males, productive, attractive, age appropriate, 
all this Disney fantasy stuff. What if your husband is 40 years old and her face just went like, and eh, you don't get to make those choices. That's the problem. We don't talk about age gap dating in our community. Our women want to date men roughly around the same age, but they want you to produce like a man 20 years older. You can't say, go ahead. If I'm say, say something. Yeah, right. Now go ahead and have sex and get it out of the way. Go ahead and have sex and get out of here on the cock carousel and just waste, go ahead and waste your youth. Go ahead. You might as well. Five years? Okay, so you want a man who's going to be five years old. So that's going to be 28 years old. And you want a 28-year-old man who's going to be, what, a virgin too? Yes or no? Okay. Okay. Do you, okay. you want children? Mm -hmm. How many would you like to have? Two or three. What state do you live in? All right. Do you want to have to work to pay significant bills after you're pregnant with your first child? You do want to have to work to pay significant bills. Oh, no, that's what I asked. Do you want to have to work? That's not, a, I don't leave any gray area. I ask this question in a specific way. Right. What percentage of the overall, what percentage of the overall family financial load do you want to have to be responsible for, for a lifetime? Rain, sleet, shine. That's what you want to be responsible for until the day you die. 40%. That means if you don't work, the family falls apart. You want to have to be responsible for 40%. Ma'am, I'm not asking, I'm not playing games. I'm serious. 40%. That means you have to work for the rest of your life until you reach retirement. You can't take off. There's no maternity leaves. and You got to do it. Rain, sleet, shine. You want to be responsible for 40%. Another problem with today's modern women, they won't be honest. They say what they they say what they they say what they think you want to hear or what sounds good. Well, you can't get anywhere if you build off a lie. Just tell the truth, man. Right, you want to be a housewife. Why is that so hard to say? Okay, ma'am, if you don't get married, what percentage of your overall financial load are you going to have to be responsible for for a lifetime? Right, so if you do get married, what percentage do you want to have to be responsible for for a lifetime? This is why our women can't get married because they don't even think like wives. Look at this. It's a very simple binary equation. 100% if I don't get married and if I do get married, the reality is you don't want to have to be responsible for really anything, but then you want to say, I don't want a high value man because I don't want... Answer the freaking question. Not more than 30%. That's okay. What is, give me the number, ma'am. It's ballpark it. Yes, ma'am. Overall financial load. If you don't get married, you got to pay 100% everything. How much, if you want three kids in Georgia, that means to have a middle class lifestyle, you're going to have to make around $300,000. All right, so you want to be responsible for what percentage of that 300000 What's your degree in? Who's going to raise your children? If you're out making $80,000 a year, ma'am, you're putting in a lot of hours. 
That means your kids are going to be raised by daycare. See, too many of our women want money and a higher standard of living versus downsizing and living on what your husband can afford. If you marry a man that's making $75,000 a year, you live in that $75,000 a year lifestyle. But you want these grandiose things. And then when someone comes to you and asks you numbers, you start beatboxing and breathing hard. This is why you end up with nothing. Now, understand this all started with this woman talking about being a virgin and dating. But listen where we are. You won't even be honest. You want to be honest that you, you want a lifestyle. And like it or not, man, you still want a high value man. Because if you're responsible for 80, he still got to come with 220 for three kids. Unless you want to put, let's be realistic. Dude, would you want to, would you want to be married to a man making $80,000 a year with three kids? Yes, no. Yes, no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then, So basically, 85% of the men in our community aren't even qualified for you. You're insane. Buy a dog. It's not about being a virgin. And, and you guys may think it's cruel the way I do this, but it needs to be said just this way. Because it's, not, it's life, and we play too much as a community. We sit around and let these women just talk, 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 like those young ladies I went out to. Just nothing in reality. $80,000 a year, which is more, double what the average black man makes. And I want you to, I want you to go in the chat room and look at all the men and like, damn. What does your father do for a living? How long have your parents been married? What age did she marry your father? What age? This is why it's so important to sit down and talk. This is why it's so important for us as parents. I'll get to you next, uh, Brandy. We got to start talking about relationships. Because you obviously have not sat down and talked to your mother and father about dating, any of this stuff. So you're just making it all up. And you're wrong about it all. Versus understanding how young, how old they were, how they started out, how they had to do it. All you know is your father makes this, your mother does that, and you're judging a life at the end, and there's no path. But, young lady, your standards are extraordinarily high. Extraordinarily high. Brandy, you got to unmute yourself. Extraordinarily high. Uh, hello? Yeah, Akiba, whoever you are, I'm going to go ahead and boot you. Hey, how are you? Uh, how old are you, by the way? All right. So you see the question. What do you have to offer a man that you haven't already given to another man? Get around that often. I mean, I do have a son, but I've known this guy since I was 15, so... I have, I don't really like, I'm sexually active, but I know my qualities and what I can bring to a man. Hold on just a second. I'll, I'll upload that. I'll upload that last interview because you guys couldn't hear the sound, but you heard what I was saying. Now you're 30. You have a son. You say what? I do. I have a son. Yeah. What's your ex-husband's name? Uh, his name is Caesar. How long were you guys married? We actually was never married. Hmm. And why'd you call yeah, me ex-husband? No, I said my ex. I my said ex-husband. Ex oh, well. Okay. How old is I your son? He's two. Okay. So you have a two-year-old son. You were, you're not married. And you were saying that you know the qualities you bring to a man. Well, I feel like I know the quality I could bring to a man. But okay. then that's where my question lies for you. Because, okay. you know, I'm 30 with, you know, a kid. And we just kind of recently stopped. But what I say, what well, the question, the question is, I ask you, what is modern woman? What do you bring? What do you have to offer a man that you haven't given to another man? Right, and so I guess my my question for that would be for another man that I would give 
besides me having another kid, you know, that well, also, like you said, that takes off the, the option okay, of that ma'am, part. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. What I mean is new. What do you have new, unused to offer a man that you haven't already given to a man? You've already given a man a child and he didn't have to marry you. Yeah. So another man would have to marry you to get a child. He has to pay more. I'm sorry. I'm just with you. You guys see why that's such a good question? No, that's a real good question. And you ladies don't seem to understand that this is how men think. Now, your face is all in the camera, so you might want to back up. All sorry. Right. So what do you have to offer? Or, or do you um, have either? I feel like I have a lot to offer besides like, you know, okay. me working, I, I cook, I clean, I but, support. But it has to be something that you haven't already given to another man. Right. And so that's a very good question that I can't even honestly answer right now. So how about, so I think you can answer the question. I think the answer is nothing. Nothing. Okay. I mean, do you have anything legitimately to offer that a man would want that you haven't already offered to another man? Children, you've That's, already done that, right? Yeah. Cooking right. and cleaning and home stuff, you've already done that for another man, right? Right. All right, so, and he didn't have to marry you to get it, right? That's very true, yes. So the next man coming along would get you older with a child and have to marry you to get what a man younger childless right. got for free. The best part. See, you ladies got to understand where it's coming from from our standpoint. Would you be really rush out to buy that car? No. All right. So if that's the car you're selling, you got to figure out how to make it more appealing to men who are on the market. Right. Okay. And that makes a lot of sense. Honestly, I've been watching you for a while and I am in therapy. Okay, good. Well, start so thinking of it why. like, let me, let me, let me bring somebody else in because it, it, it really gets difficult, especially after you have children. You got to turn your um, cameras on folks. See, this is why this is why um, the this is why being married and having a child uh, is better in a man's mind, in most men's mind, than a woman who's just having a child outside of wedlock. Because at least he could say, "Well, she had a child with a man, but she she required marriage." If you have a child and didn't require marriage, it is hard to be a man and say you require marriage now and what's funny is many women today start increasing your price the older you get so you're going opposite to the market well i had a child and i did all this when i was young but now as i'm older he got to marry me first and then wait and then the, and then like no that ain't how that works that's not how that works for us but, uh, all right, so, Kimberly, you got to turn on your camera, and this person, uh, Akibaya, oh, I'm not going to put you on unless I see you on camera, so you can just stay there. This is why it becomes so difficult for you ladies to, uh, who already have children, Like it or not, ladies, if you have children, you have to lower your price to match the market value. I don't care what people are out here telling you because they don't have men who are willing to take you. They'll tell you to girl, keep your value up and such and so forth. They don't have men following them. They don't have men following them. And um, I I'm sorry. I know a lot of um, folks, you do better trying to get your price right. Hello? Brittany, hello? Hello. How are you? Hi. I'm well. How old are you? 20. How old are you? 28. All right. 
So the question on the floor, you saw the question. What do what do modern women have to offer? What do you have to offer a man that you haven't already offered another man? For me, it's a child. Okay. All right. So that's one thing. What else? Anything else? Um, I've never been married. Okay. Um I would say those are like top two things that I feel are pretty high value that a man would, as long as he wants it, would see as valuable. Well, a kid is obviously more valuable than the previous caller, but marriage is more often what, okay. So at 28, how many children do you want? Um, three. Did you go to college? I did. Did you graduate? I did. Um, I always ask this question. Do you want to have to work to pay significant bills after you're pregnant with your first child? No. I would like to take the first year off. Uh, And you do it with all your kids? Say again? Do that with all three of your children? Take the first year off? Um... I haven't thought about that, but I would, pro- more, yeah, more than likely, if, if okay. I enjoyed the experience of the first child, more, yeah, more than likely. Would you want to stair step your kids like one, three, five? Yeah, I would want Because you're 28, so you're going to kind of have to get to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So arguably, if you do that, ma'am, that's like being off. You just said for the first year, so after the third child reaches 12 months, you put the, you put it in daycare and go to, back to work. Um, no, I mean I would rely on family support. I do want to be able to have some type of independence when it comes to doing things that I also love. I don't just want to be a mom, but I do want motherhood to be a very big part of what okay, I am. Ma'am, I, but, okay, you say you want to have family support, meaning what? Take your children to a family member? Yeah, like grandparents. So you want um, your grand so we want your grandparent your grandmother or you want the grandparents to be the daycare while you go out and do your independent thing? I I don't want to be a stay at home wife. So I feel well, like No, as I'm just working through what you said, man. Life. I'm just working through what you said. After twelve months, the first one is Last one's 12 months old. I said, you take them to daycare. You said, I would like to rely on family. That means they go to family, grandmother. And then you, while they're at grandmother's house, what are you doing? Um, I'm working. I'm handling business. I'm taking care of my business. What's your degree I'm in? doing hobbies. What's your degree Criminal in? Criminal justice. Criminal justice, but I'm in finance. What do you do in finance? I'm a payroll manager. Payroll manager. How long have you had that position? Uh, five years. What state are you in? New York. New York City? Yes. Okay, so it's 238% of the cost of living. Do you make in excess of $90,000 a year? Not at the moment. I make very close to it. Right. But so... So, and when I say 90, so for anybody else, that would be about $45,000 a year in Atlanta, uh, Dallas, because it can sound like a lot of money until you realize a 600 square foot apartment in Brooklyn is $3,000. Very true. So, um, how much would you pay in your family, your grandmother to take care of your kids? I haven't thought about that, but so I nothing? feel like we could work on something reasonable. Market rate? Mm. Would you be willing to pay what you have to pay the market? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, give or take. Yeah, I would say give or take. I feel like no, 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 not give actually... or take, ma'am. It's either market or not. See, if it's give or take, it's take, yes. and it's taken in your benefit. Yeah. Okay. I would, I how much would, is would, how much is infant care. child? How much is infant care? How much is infant care? Weekly. 
Don't give me the line. I, I don't have kids. So Just I guess. Just guess. What do you think? I would say on average weekly, maybe no less than a thousand dollars a week for one child. Twelve hundred. Say again. For one child, right? Yeah. All right. So let's use your number: thousand dollars a week. But you have three kids. So one, three, five. You delete your two kids in 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 care. So that'd be two thousand dollars a week. Let's just say fifteen hundred dollars a week. That's six thousand dollars a month. That's six thousand dollars a month. That's seventy two thousand dollars a year. And you don't even make ninety thousand dollars a year. Why are you working if you got to spend that much money to your grandmother? Hmm. You ladies don't think about the math. I didn't think about that part. I haven't thought about the honestly. Well, the thing, well, no, but well, what you do? But but but, but let me let me let me finish my example. Let me finish my example. You don't think about the math because what it is is you guys value these goddamn jobs more than the most important job, being a mother. You want to be independent, making your own money. So your grandmother or somebody else who should be living her golden years got to raise your children. So you can go out here and work at some corporation to pay for somebody else to raise your kids. And then when it goes awry, you start blaming the system. Yes, you make valid points. Now that you broke down the math, it does not make sense to essentially pay my salary in childcare. Well, that's, that's, However, mm-hmm. I do feel like being a woman, only one aspect of being a woman is being a mom, but I would still like to be able to do things that I'm passionate about. So such as, I would need such that as, support. such as. Um, I'm very much so into yoga. I love to travel. Um, how do you yeah, do? I, I have a how tax do you? business. How do, how do you? I have, I'm 28. I have a tax and lady, business. Lady, let me say something so, to you. And I need you to listen. I need you to listen. I don't know where in the hell y'all got off thinking that y'all's life is supposed to be better. Travel is for people with real money. You don't have it. Unless you're talking about, listen, ma'am, listen, ma'am. Unless you're talking about traveling to Philadelphia, you don't have that kind of money to be traveling. So to travel the way most people talk about travel is somebody has to fund it. It comes out of the family nest egg. Okay. I've been able to go to Colombia, Kenya. Like, I feel as if you proper planning, you'll be able to travel. You're a single I woman and you can do, oh, yeah, okay. You can, a single woman, you can do that. Well, how much student loan debt do you have? Zero. Okay. Colombia, South Africa, as a single woman, yes. Where are you, how are you going to be able to do that with the, see, what you're listening to, folks, is women who don't know their place. Women who are wanting to go take their children and let somebody else raise them. And then you just want, these kids are pets. Listen, man, because who's going to raise, how are you going to take your kids to Colombia, South Africa, and all this other kind of stuff? Have you ever, have you, have you, have you ever even babysit? Have you, I need you not to over talk. I don't know. Have you even, have you kept a kid for longer than a week? Have you kept anybody's child for longer than a week? No. Then you have no idea what you're talking about. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and level set Are you, you real quick. That? I'm going to level set you real quick. Ma'am, yes, as a single woman, you can go to these places. But just like I said at the beginning of the show, it's not about you. You get married for something bigger than you. You don't even want to do the number one job and raise your kids. You want somebody else to raise them so you can have some independence. Then buy a dog. That's not a wife. That's not a mother. So according to your standards, not according to my standards, Ma, Ma, it's not according to my standards. Your grandmother or is raising your kids so you can go work in the fi- in finance or the criminal well, justice degree is not my standard. standard. I'm I'm only saying your standard because we're having this dialogue and I'm only I'm only hearing from your perspective on it at this current moment. I'm not saying that men don't agree with you. However, mm-hmm. I'm just saying that According to you, marriage. Once you lock into marriage as a woman, you're supposed to 
be a housewife or just lock into what's the purpose of marriage what's the purpose of marriage what's the purpose of marriage for me the purpose of marriage is partnership unifying worlds and basically essentially helping each other to grow and ma'am let me excuse me hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on I, I, I didn't ask you this earlier, but are you a Christian or no? No, I'm spiritual, but I don't mm-hmm. like okay. so claim a religion. The, around the world, the purpose of marriage is a woman to be a man's help me. Everywhere else in the world where they have family, a wife's job is to be her husband's help meet. What you're talking about is some last 60 year womanist, feminist, gibberish that doesn't work partners all this other kind of stuff ma'am at the end of the day you'd be marrying somebody you get pregnant and have the baby but the responsibility of raising that child would be offloaded to somebody else that you would pay that person while you're at work doing whatever is grooming your child you're not raising a child. So is ma- a woman ma- not ma'am, able- ma'am, 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 I'm not finished. You're maintaining a life at that point. That's all. Okay. Go ahead. Is is a woman not able to work and take care of a child? Do you feel what as do you if mean? it's either or? What do you or mean? Or a woman either. is not able to, a woman, a woman, a, a married woman? Because it sounds. Are you saying a married woman, ma'am? I'm trying to be clear. Is a married woman? A married woman, yes. Well, uh, before I answer that question, what's more important, your job or your children? My children. Then everything you've described, I want the audience to. I want the audience to list. I want you guys to write down in the comment section what has she described is more important to this point: her job or her family. Ma'am, I'm letting the 21,000 people No, See, you can't reject that. See, you can't reject that. You need I to can't just be the comments. So I but but you I, you have to wait. I didn't say I'm I'm going to let you, I'm going to tell you how I'm experiencing you. I want you to understand how men and women are hearing this. Everything you've talked about has been about this new wave mother stuff. It's it's like I want to be independent and I want to travel and this and that. Nope. That ain't about family. That's about you. I definitely want to travel with my family. Uh huh. That's possible. I've seen it in real life. I'm yep. pretty sure people can attest sure. to that. Sure, it's, it's possible. Well it's possible, but it's possible. But I'm also going to ask you this too. Um, it's possible. And with how many children you say you want? Three, two or three? Correct. Uh huh. How much money is your husband going to have to make in order to support a family of three in New York City to where you can travel Um, out of the country? Probably over, definitely in the high two, three, two hundred, yeah, three hundred thousand and over. Mm hmm. Definitely in the high two hundred three. No, no, no. Definitely in the high two or three hundreds. Uh huh. So he's gonna have to another one of these men who's gonna have to be in the top one percent, top three percent. How tall are you? Five two. Dress size. Four. How much did you weigh last time you weighed yourself? One fifty. But you're not a dress size four. Not a dress size four. It's a lie. It's not a dress size no, four. No, I'm not. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm that's not. fine. That's okay. You're dress size four. You're dress size. You're dress size four. That don't matter. I'm, don't matter. I'm you're, you're fine, ma'am. Let's, uh, next question. Okay. Next question. Next question. On a no, scale from one. On a scale. Right no, 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 no. You're one fifty. No. <laughs> God damn it! I said no. I said next question. On okay. a scale from one I'll, to ten. On a scale from one to ten. On a scale from one to ten. You can't use seven. Where would you rank yourself? Fresh face out of the shower, your natural hair. Okay, that's how I look right now. So I'm asking you, what would you rank yourself on a scale from one to ten? Fresh face out of the shower, where would you rank yourself? Can't you sub? Fresh face out the shower. I'm an I'm an eight. <laughs> I'm an eight. 
I'm gonna eat. If I can't use seven, I'm gonna eat. I'm not gonna go low. I'm gonna go You're high. six. I see myself. Going high. You're six. You're cute. I'm not a six. You're six every day, man. You're six every day and twice on Sunday. Five foot two, 150 <laughs> pounds, man. You're cute. You think 150 pounds is cute? You're cute. You're cute. You're cute. I'll give you cute. But if you're 150 pounds or five foot two, you're a bit of a dress size eight, six, eight. And here we get right down to the man who's making the kind of money you're talking about has a lot of options. That's what it really gets down to. It don't matter what you think, man. Man, man uh, did you hear what I said? The man you're talking about, 200 plus thousand dollars, has a lot of options. Do you not understand that? Do you not agree with that? I understand that. So, if he has a lot of options, what men who want families don't pick are women who are a six. Whether you like it or not, you're not you're you're not an eight, nine, or ten. An eight puts you right at Beyonce's level or higher, and that's not you. I'm not saying you're unattractive. I just said you're cute, ma'am. I'm moving on. Bottom line is. Men don't pick women who these men tend to want legacy. They're not looking for someone who's looking for a partner. They're looking for a wife to raise their children, to pass their culture, their beliefs on. Oh, listen, ma'am. Listen. Oh, Jesus. Women like this believe being a mother means giving birth. That is not what being a mother means. The things that we remember about our mothers and our grandmothers is they did more than gave birth to us. They raised us. They, your grandmother baked. My grandmother was a was a nurturer. Her family was primary. She we traveled, but no damn way would she put her travel up before her family. And the, and the work you're not supposed to want to give your kids over to anybody else. You're supposed to want to have your kids at home. You're supposed to want to have a lower standard of life, smaller home to keep your children and your family where it's important. So you input into them. You women like you, modern women, modern women, modern women, modern women think giving birth and being a mother are synonymous. They're not. And damn sure not for the kind of men earning the kind of money you're talking about. There is no. okay, ma'am. There is no, let me, I got news for you. Okay, I got news for you. There's no balance with the kind of men you're talking about. What are you doing with your microphone? There is no balance for the kind of, again, understand guys, this woman wants a man making a quarter of a million dollars or more. There ain't no fucking balance with that. And I want you like, I want you, I want folks to understand. She's not a rude woman. But this is an acute black woman who wants a man who's making, who has has the buying power of a quarter of a million dollars or more, and the best he's going to get is a rental womb. And your grandma got to raise his kids. Men don't want that, ma'am. And thank you for being polite, but see, Again, but I want you to understand criminal justice. I'm doing finance. This is that modern woman stuff. I, I I don't want to give up my independence. I want to be able to travel to Ghana and this and that. Uh-oh. So I'm going I'm going to go burden my grandmother to make my grandmother raise my children, so I can live this Instagram life. In, I mean, if that's what you want. But I'm saying the kind of men, the kind of men that you ladies want to marry are looking for different kinds of women. They're looking for women who are going to give up their careers. I tell you right now, I will not be with a woman who's not going to give up her career. You know what? I said it before. In high value men, we employ our women. You, she's going to give up a career because I'm going to pay you better than your career going to pay you anyway. 
Being with the kind of being with being with these kind of men is better than having to get up, get up at five o'clock in the morning and have to go commute, stress this, such and so forth. You want to sleep in, sleep in. Who you work for? You work for your man. See, I'm gonna say this. I think so many black women, I think so many women in general, black women in particular, have lost so much, you don't know how to win. You look a good thing in the face and you fuck it up. That's what this young lady was talking about last night. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. How old are you? I'm 23. 23. Uh, yes. So what do you have to offer a man that you haven't already given to another one? Um, well, I am I have never had a child. So okay. I would say that I can offer a child, but the other lady also never had a child too, so that's not that big of a deal. Never been married, but... That's fine. And so then, other than those two things, honestly, nothing. Why are you walking in the dark by yourself? Oh, that's because I just finished work. Okay. I'm going home. Yeah, that's why. Do you live close to work? If I drove, it would be closer. But since I don't, like, it's kind of far. How far is the walk? Oh, the walk is just to the station. It's like 17 minutes. Oh, okay. I'm yeah, it's not that bad. I'll take you off camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, if you could take me off camera, I really appreciate it. I did, that. I did, I did, I did. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, well, that's a question that I think you ladies going to have to, because that's top of, my, um, top of men's mind. See, a yeah. lot of the questions I ask women seem so, they seem so offensive because <laughs> la last night I had one woman saying, how do you get to speak for all these men? How, and how do you know what you want is right? For, and I said, I'm not speaking for all these men. I'm like, what I'm saying is what men have always said. They just can't. Mm -hmm. And she's like, now you act like you know everything. And then three men came along and said, no, he's not speaking for us. We think this. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, if you want something with a man that's going to last, mm -hmm. you need to put him first. Yes. And I think that's something I've been cultivating lately. I like I'm really good at just following. Like I enjoy going with the flow. It's like, oh, you have a plan. Oh, that's fantastic. And it's like a burden is off my shoulder. It's like, yes, I'll show up. What do you want? What, what are we gonna do? What do you want me to do? We're gonna have so much fun. And so, at, at your age, at your age, it's easier to do that because I hope the the assumption is you had have not had many counterproductive experiences so what do you want as an outcome with the man would you like to be married oh yes oh yes do you want children I cannot. um right now no but like i'm on the fence if the man i was with said i want two kids i'd say okay let's do but if the man i'm with said i don't want any kids it's, i can also say okay Okay, so um, yeah. why why what's the purpose of marriage without children? Company to not die alone. This is where you ladies also need to understand where men are coming from. Mm -hmm. It's easy for you to say company when with a fifty plus percent divorce rate and women filing eighty percent of the divorces, and yeah. I mean you guys don't you guys don't have the same consequences. Yeah, so saying company, men can have your company and not have to put themselves in legal jeopardy with the state. That's the if you don't true. want children, one yeah. of the main, if you don't want to have children, the very thing that you said you have to offer men is not on the table. Well, I want kids if you want kids. No, no, no. I asked you, did you want children? You said you're on the fence. You said if you don't, if he wants them, you want them. If he doesn't, you're done. But when I ask you, yeah. When I asked you about marriage, you said, yes, you ecstatic <laughs> about that. When I asked you about children, that was not the same. So you can't play oh me that goodness. way. You're no, right. so You're the truth right. of the matter is the yeah. very thing that you have to offer a man is not even yeah. really what you want. Yeah. So if you don't want kids, if you had a childless marriage, you have company, then what? You guys would just what, live like yuppies and travel? See, that's, that's the thing. What's the point of life then? What, like, that's what I'm trying to figure out as well. If I am married and like, okay, we travel, then what? 
Well, the point the point is life is about people and life is about yes. relationships. And mm-hmm. so many women are so afraid of getting married, building a life with somebody because they're because uh, you think the grass is greener on the other side or you're going to pick wrong. So you wait until it's too late. Life is not perfect, but the thing is what life is is you when you're in a when you're sick, have you ever really been ill? Never. Never? See, I've never, I have yeah, the benefit of having cancer at 21. And it and it changes your mindset. I meet so many people, women in particular, who life has only been one way. I'm like, but you really want to see what happens? Let illness happen. Coronavirus gave a lot of women a wake up call to how lonely they were. So I think you really need to ask yourself why it is you don't want children um why 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 it's not a why it's not a a priority for you because that's that's kind of a natural instinct but you might want to take some time with that yeah that's true i think it's also because i have brothers and i feel that once i see that they have kids it's like oh like i also want that like there's not a feeling where it's like oh like i really want you have or you you have only brothers I only have brothers. Okay, I get it now. You were raised like a boy. <laughs> All right, that's why you walk into the station in the dark. I get it. Yeah, uh-uh. you need to be around some feminine energy. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you for your time. Coming. All right, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Very attractive, dark sister. Yeah, I think it's weird. She was, she was attractive. See, ladies, you got to ask yourself a question from the man's standpoint. What do you have to offer a man that he wants? To risk marriage, men want family and they want you to raise his children. If the only thing you're going to do is give birth, then he might as well be kicking it with the nanny or the daycare provider. But so many of you ladies today want to get out here and act like See, this is why so many of you have devalued your most primary job. Like being a wife and a mother is simple. Yet I know most of you haven't even spent one week with a child. Y'all are crazy. And then when it's too late, then all of a sudden, oh, I'm tired of working and this and that. Ladies. Ninety percent of you, eighty-five to ninety percent of you, no, ninety percent. I'm not going back. Eighty-five to ninety percent of you, your place is with a man. It is a fantasy to think you're going to live your best life on one in freaking come. Six percent of women in this country earn six figures or more. I know plenty of six-figure women who are chronically attached to the grind. And most over my lifetime have not liked it. Whatever you have to offer to a man, you better get clear on what you're going to offer. And what a man wants is your respect your appreciation, and your praise. You better learn how to rap to a man. A man wants your respect, appreciation, and your praise. I was going to do an entire video on that, but let me go ahead and break this down right now because I don't need an entire video. Get your notepads out, especially you older women. Danger zone! Here it is. Get your notepads out, ladies. I'm about to save your freaking life. Fuck your job. Fuck your six figures. Fuck your PhD. Screw all that. Forget all that. You know what a man wants? A man wants your respect in front and behind the scenes. He wants your respect when you're out there in the street, out there in public. He wants you to re- you reflect him. He wants your respect. 
So you cannot say you respect your man if he is not your man, if he's not your number one concern, top of mind, everything that you think about doing, not your job, your man, not your friends, your man. Respect is something that men are fine tuned to look for. And men know when we don't have respect, he wants it in front and behind, in front, in front of the scenes and behind the scenes. He wants your appreciation, verbal and visible. So many of you modern women are so damn closed off emotionally, you don't know how to give appreciation. Ask a modern woman when's the last time you wrote a love letter to a man? He'll get, what, it, what, what is it? I'm going to say it and you're going to get mad. Most modern women are emotionally fucking constipated. Because emotions put you in your feminine and your feminine puts you in your vulnerable. You're so used to taking care of yourself and know what you have to do. You are emotionally constipated and driving yourself to destruction. Appreciation, verbal and visible. You must say it often. I love you. I appreciate you. This wouldn't work without you. You make my life better. Don't assume he knows it. Say it. I don't want to get on his nerves and just say it. Check your French toast ego and screw your pride. Keep your man verbal and visible. Show it. How many times do I walk out of here and I see non-black couples and the woman's all hugged up on the man? I walk out of here and black. Why don't you grab your man's? Why don't you? Let, I, I saw a man try to hold his woman's hand and she was kind of like trying to open the door for her. Fucking men. You want to be women. Relax in your feminine. Your feminine. Oh. Appreciation, verbal and visible. When a woman appreciates a man, you can tell it. It's the way she looks at him. You can tell when a woman appreciates a man, the way she sits by him. And here's the problem. So many good men are so you are doing good so long that many of you ladies start to take them for granted and you start to think they're boring and then that's why you need therapy so you can understand your dysfunction to where you think being nice is boring. Respect in front and behind the scenes, appreciation, verbal and visible, and praise overt and often. Overt praise. Open your mouth. Use that tongue you have that's so sharp. See, you, you're you more willing to cut him than you're willing to praise him. You need to praise at 10 times a time, uh, nine times, and then criticize once. But you're more willing to criticize than praise. Overt, overt praise. Thank you. Oh, that was nice. No, put some goddamn adjectives on it. Use that PhD. I'm a PhD. Use that English degree and use some of them highfalutin college words you got and put some damn praise behind it. Use that the use that thesaurus and skip and stop saying nice or good. Come up with new ways to praise your man. Overt and often, often, yeah, every goddamn day, every day. You should not go to bed unless you praise your man. I like to praise you like I should. Yeah. Modern women need to learn how to rap to their men. Respect in front and behind. Appreciation. Yep. 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 Appreciation. Verbal and visible. And praise. Overt and often. If you can't do that, buy a dog. Die alone. That's all you're suitable for. Because the kind of men that you want deserve women who at least are willing to do that bare minimum. That's the minimum. That's the minimum. 
And there are some women who think that's doing a lot. That's why you can't keep a good man. And guys are starting to wake up and understand and recognize their value. And the reason so many of our women can't do it is because you have not been taught to put your men first. A man is at best something you choose to settle for when you get tired. Your man is at best somebody you choose to partner with versus being your purpose. I'll have a kid, but I don't want to lose. Oh, come on, man. Brothers are like, that's right. They think they should be praised. Right. You are having to praise your man. Tell him about the muse. The power of life and death lies in the tongue. Ladies, understand, you have everything you need to win. Many of you out there are working yourselves to death, crying yourself to sleep, stress broken like them young ladies. I could see the fear in her eyes and then I could see one of them trying to act so she's tough and I'm like, you just a big ball of goo. I'm, it is, I told both of these women, I think it is sad so many of our women have isolated themselves from us. When we are sitting around in every other table, we saw non-black folks husbands and wives, boyfriends or girlfriends, black folks, single as French toast, looking good. And yes, ladies, it is going to be required for you to humble yourself and come back to your men. Winter is coming. That's right. It's going to be required for you to come back and humble your men. Now understand, some of y'all be like, some of me like this. I hate it here. I know, I know you're mad. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I did, I did, I didn't make it this way. But I guarantee you this: your strong feeling, that 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 the the feeling you're having that. To reject is going against your human nature. That's a result of the programming. The things I'm saying, like cooperation and submission, should not grate your nerves. That ain't how you're naturally supposed to be. You're all in your masculine. So we're going to ask you, what do you bring to the table or what do you offer the man that he wants that you haven't given to another man that shouldn't be offensive? You should be like, well, damn. Because I'm telling you right now, as a man, this would not work, would it, ladies? I could not come to you and say, hey, uh, Melissa, look here. I want you to be the mother of my children and I want you to be my wife, okay? Now, my, my, my ex-girlfriend I bought her a Mercedes and I, and I got her a nice home. Okay. That's my ex-girlfriend. But now I want you to be my wife, but I want to put you in this apartment and I want to get you a bus pass. How'd that work? You want, you want to be my wife? Melissa, 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 Melissa be like this. Me, me. There's no way in hell you accept that deal. Wait a minute. You gave your girlfriend a Mercedes and bought her a home, paid off her college debt, and you want me to live in an apartment and you're going to give me a bus pass. There's no honor in being your wife. Oh, then what's the honor in being your husband? Oh, shit. Go to hell. Oh, 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 oh. All right, well, that's it. Wednesday show is going to be a banger. Wednesday show is going to be a banger because there is a way out of this, ladies. I spent several weeks just thinking. 
watching, observing. There is a way out of this if you are willing to give me two things or three things. One, if you're willing to come and sit down and listen in good faith. Two, if you are willing to risk. Three, if you're willing to be open and vulnerable. A man must have a woman that has some hope in her. And many modern women are walking around today hopeless. That is why you're overweight, stressed, everything else, not enjoying life. Life has become gray because it's a monotonous routine. There's no hope. There's nothing to look forward to. There's a way out. And the way out, I'm not a rocket surgeon or a brain scientist. It has always been in group, couple. We are not meant to be alone, separated. It's not how we're, human beings are not designed to be like this. So I got to give you some of the, I got to give you some sour to give you some sweet. Like I said to the people I talked to last night, uh, you don't have to say nothing. Nobody will know you. Don't dox yourself in the comment section. But it was very good conversation. And I would tell you this, I have those all the time. And what I saw more than anything else was two young women that had fear. Because they're getting so many mixed messages and the wrong information. I'm just giving you what men often talk about to give you a different kind of information to allow you to make the choice to make a different decision. Still your choice. But I don't, I don't understand how so many women who know you're not willing to deal with the pressures of life like this, who know you don't want to be out here working. How many women call and say they want to work? and pay bills and that's such and so forth. Well, if you don't want to do that, that means you need to have somebody that's going to do that. Where are they going to come from, ladies? Anyway, getting late. It's getting late. Why are you still here, girl? Have you made up your mind? You're going to make... Man, we ain't had no Ready for the World love songs in so long, boy. Tell you right now, though. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. It, 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 maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. But we, we are getting there one step at a time. Appreciate you guys for showing back up. <clears throat> Y'all know how we do these things. Uh, turn up, oh, Tomorrow on Instagram. Tomorrow on Instagram. Thursday, Tuesday on Instagram. Thursday on Instagram. When, Monday, Wednesday, Friday on YouTube. All right, people. Oh, oh yeah, by the way, if you have not joined Patreon, the family, you'll want to do that. The broadcast on the family will be on Thursdays and uh, other times going forward. Stuff that's over there will only be seen there. More instructions on that to come. Uh, cannot wait to get this week. We, are, I love this time of year. Love this time of year. Love what we're about to get into. You know how it goes, folks. Until next time, peace. We are gone. No, I don't want to do that song. Hey, Jen. I got, can't wait till she sings that song. Give me some songs over there. Till next time, folks. Peace. We're gone. I'm a PhD. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a PhD. But it's gonna take that bitch down. It's gonna be me. Yes. I cannot say what's wrong or right. Not the banger. The banger. Oh, 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 oh,
<laughs> I don't know what it's called. I just know the sound it makes when it lies. Get to the chopper! Back in the swing of things, people. <laughs> <laughs>